Hello all, John Castillo here. In today's video, I wanted to go over a few editing tips for beginners, particularly geared towards quarantined educators who have had to completely restructure their education in just a matter of days. In case you're a new viewer, I released a video last week called Recording Tips for Quarantined Educators, which is sort of a prequel to this, if you will. So if you haven't checked that one out yet and you need recording advice before editing advice, I would recommend you go there first. As I mentioned in the end of that video, in this video I will be talking about synchronizing audio and video, as well as synchronizing video and video, for example, if you had to record a top-down perspective while you write, while also talking directly to the camera. This video will be split into two parts, editing on a Mac computer on iMovie, which is free software, timestamp for that right over here, and we'll also talk about editing on a Windows computer where we'll be using DaVinci Resolve, timestamp for that right over here. Now, DaVinci Resolve is a little bit more advanced of a software compared to iMovie. It's a little bit more complex, it's got more advanced features. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just be sticking to the basics. All of that being said, if you're a teacher who is interested in video and you're playing the long-term game, I would actually advise you watch the DaVinci Resolve portion of this video so that once you learn the basics, you can actually stick to the same software and advance further in your editing career. Here we go. When you open iMovie, you're gonna be greeted by this projects panel and you'll be able to create a new project. We're gonna go ahead and click that and we want to create a movie. And we're greeted by these three panels. We've got our libraries over here on the left. We've got our viewer here on the right, which is where we'll be watching the videos that we drag. And at the bottom, we have the timeline where we will be dragging the video towards and watching it in the viewer. So first things first, I like to save this as a new library. So the way you do that is you go to open library, new, and I will save this in my desktop. I have a folder here. I will title it iMovie. And here I will title this iMovie syncing tips. Wonderful, so we have a iMovie library, it's nice and labeled, and we have it saved where we want it. Next thing you'll want to import media. So I have also got that in the same folder, this one with the date of today. Double click, video, sync examples, and I have everything that I need for this tutorial in this folder, so I'm gonna go ahead and import that. Wonderful, and here we have some raw clips of me. Top down view and some audio. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag the first video of me is how to sync audio and video. We'll start with that and we'll, then we'll go towards video and video. So I'm going to drag this clip of me down here to the timeline. As you can see, now we can scroll and watch it. And do notice that Notice that I started this video by actually doing a clap. The reason why I do a clap is because iMovie doesn't have an automatic syncing feature, so you actually have to do it manually. And by actually having that waveform over here, you can see it's very clear where the clap takes place, as opposed to trying to sync it to this stuff. This will make our lives a lot easier. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this audio. This is the one. And you can see that clap is right over here. So let's, if you go to either side of this clip, you'll notice some arrows. If you click, you can shrink the clip. There's our clap. I'm gonna move it here, right there. You can zoom by using your the gestures or by doing command minus and command plus being zoom in, command minus being zoom out. So let's zoom in so we can put these exactly where we want it. All right. And now let's listen. Great. 
So we no longer need the camera audio now because we have the higher quality audio. That's the whole reason why we would want to sync audio and video in the first place. So what we'll do is we're gonna right click on the clip. We're going to select detach audio. And now here, as you can see, this is labeled the same way my video clip was labeled. And now we shall delete this. Hello everyone. This is an example of sync and we're left with a synchronized audio and video, which we have done manually. Now let's say that you want to synchronize video with video, not just audio with video. This is how you would go about doing that. First, let's start by dragging the first video clip that we have. So here's my clap. We'll do the exact same process. I'm gonna drag this out so we see where the clap is right there. Here I have my second clip. It's a top-down view of me writing on a piece of paper. You'll notice that this clip is actually recorded vertically by accident. I'll show you how to rotate that as well. So I'm gonna start by dragging that onto the timeline. Here I have my first clap on the straightforward video, and I'm going to shrink this until the second clap, which is right over here, and drag those so that they're, oops, drag those so that they're roughly in the same place. In order to rotate, you have to go up here. So, so on top of the viewer, you'll see a bunch of different icons. These are sort of the manipulators, what you can do with your footage in iMovie. You'll notice that one is called Crop. So if you click this, you'll get a little submenu and you'll be able to rotate your video in here. That's an easy fix. If you don't have this menu, in previous versions of iMovie, there used to be a button right next to the magic wand called adjustments or adjust, something like that, which was sort of like a separate button that would open this menu. Anyways, we have fixed our video. So now I'm gonna zoom in to make sure that this is good. There we go, nice and synchronized. So now that those two are synchronized, I will bring in the audio, my master audio, drag that in. I've got my clap over here, so I'm going to drag this, boop. There's my clap. I'll drag this right over here. And now I'm going to go right after the clap. We no longer need the clap now, right? The only purpose of the clap was to synchronize the footage. We don't necessarily need the clap to be in our video. So we're gonna go right after that. I'm gonna click around here. Clap is to the left. We're on the right side of the clap. I'm gonna click on the footage, right click and select split clip. And I'm gonna do that with all three clips in the same place, including the audio, split clip. I'm gonna select all three of these and remove them, delete, they're gone. We don't need them anymore. And much like we did in the previous example, I'm going to select both of these clips, right click, detach audio, and delete the unnecessary audio. And now we have one audio track. It's all nice and in sync. Of course, we don't really wanna see my hand when I'm not writing and when I'm talking. So I'm going to go to that part right where I start writing, right around here, let's say, and I will select split clip and I will delete that part. So now we have two video clips that are in sync with each other and with the audio. I will play it for you so that you can see me giving an example and then writing on the paper. Now in this example, I will be showing you how to sync video with video. So as you can see over here, I have the same paper from last time. I hope this helps some more. Woo! And that's it, so I'm gonna cut it right there. Boom, can I select all of them actually? At the same time, right click, split clip, and delete. So that's the whole video. So now we need to export it, very easy. So we click export on the top right, this little arrow that's shooting out of a box, or share, I guess it's technically the share button. File, and let's title this audio or multicam video sync. Should learn how to type. 
uh, format audio and video resolution you can just keep these to whatever it is that you recorded on next and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the folder that oh, right here I'm gonna create video exports I'm going to create video exports and I'm going to save it in here as you can see on the top right, right next to the share button, you now have this little exporting circle. Great, and it's done. Share is successful, so I wanna see it. Let's make sure that it worked. Now in this example, I will be showing you how to sync video with video. So as you can see over here, I have the same paper from last time. I hope this helps some more. Woo! And there you have it. If that was helpful for you, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up or a subscribe. If you have any further questions, feel free to shoot me a message in the comment section. And now, here we go with DaVinci Resolve. All right, let's put together our DaVinci Resolve project, and then I'll show you how to go about syncing the audio and the video. So first things first, we're gonna want to open the software. If you haven't downloaded it, you have to download it. Very first thing you're greeted with is your project screen. So to get started, you're gonna want to go to the bottom, write new project, and I'm gonna title this video sync underscore project. And now DaVinci Resolve has opened. There's a lot of information here. It's a little bit overwhelming, but this is what you need to take out of this screen. At the very bottom, you've got a menu. And depending on what you click in this menu, the software will change to adapt to the needs of what you've clicked on. So I'm gonna go back here to the, this is what it was open on. The very first one here on the left is called media. This is the menu that we're gonna use to import the video and the audio. Then we can skip this one. Here we've got edit. Edit is where we'll be putting together our video. And then you can skip all these other ones until the very last one, which is called Deliver. And this one, of course, is how we're gonna export our finished edit from DaVinci Resolve into a usable video file that you can send your students. So let's go to Media, and you'll see that here it says No Clips in Media Pool. So I am going to open my folder, which I have left here on the side, sync underscore footage. I'm gonna drag them in. And DaVinci is gonna say, the clips have a different frame rate than the current project. If it does say that, just select change. This will make the project settings match the clip settings that you've imported, which is what you want. Great. And that's it for importing. So I'm gonna make this full screen again. And now we can move on to edit. All right, so on the left here, you'll see all of the media that we brought into DaVinci Resolve. On the right, you'll see two viewers. So if, if I were to drag over this, if I were to drag over this clip, you can see that you can preview your clips with the viewer on the left and the right viewer is for what is on the timeline. Now the timeline is this part at the bottom which we can drag our clips into. So for example, if I were to drag this down here, it has now, DaVinci has created a timeline called Timeline 1. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this Video Sync Timeline and I'm gonna drag this to the left so it starts at the beginning. And like I said, you'll notice that the footage that is in the timeline is viewable on the right viewer, while the footage that is in the media bin that you still haven't used yet is viewable with this viewer on the left. So far, so good. So pretty straightforward. You can drag clips in here. I'll just gra drag these two and create your edit by dragging clips in there. You can shorten them, dragging them in and out, or you can cut them by selecting the blade edit mode. 
cutting them wherever you want. Select the mouse and delete the parts of the video that you don't want to use. But we have some video footage that doesn't have great audio and we have some audio that was recorded for the purpose of recording better audio. So how do we go about syncing those? Well, DaVinci Resolve has an auto sync feature, which is kind of great. So let's go with that first since it'll most of the time do what you want it to. Here I have my GH5 audio video. So this is my first example. And here I have the, aud the proper audio that I've recorded. So this is what the clip sounds like straight out of camera. As you can see, I added a clap there so that I have a spike in the waveform in case the auto sync doesn't work. And we'll, we'll see a little bit about that in a second. Hello everyone, this is an example of syncing audio with video. So the audio sounds very far away, very distant. There's a lot of echo in the room. Of course, we want to replace that with the good audio. Hello everyone, this is an example of syncing audio with video. Much better. So we'll select the audio that we want to sync as well as the video that we want to sync. Right click and we are going to select auto sync audio and we want it to be based on waveform. So there are two options here, based on waveform and based on waveform and append tracks. Based on waveform, we'll essentially just swap out the in-camera audio for the pro audio. If you select based on waveform and append tracks, you'll have both tracks to choose from. Now, I like to personally see everything, all the steps along the way, so I'm going to select and append the tracks. So that's done. And now, all we have to do is I'm going to select this clip and I will drag it into my timeline. Oops, there you go. And as you can see, there are two audio tracks here. The first one on the top, this is going to be, this is the first one, the first audio clip on the top, this is going to be the in-camera audio. And the second one is going to be the appended audio. So we can go ahead and listen to it. I'm gonna press on the S button. This is solo, means I'm soloing the track. Hello everyone, this is an example of syncing. As you can see, that's the camera audio. Now I'm going to deselect this solo and select solo on the second audio track. Audio with video. So that is the audio that I want to be using. You can just mute that second track and you're good to go. Audio and video synced. All right, so far so good. But what if we have two video clips and I also have some audio to go with that. So let's select this clip. I have an iPhone, as you can see, I've got a piece of paper. I've got a front shot and I have my audio. So three clips, right click, and instead of selecting auto sync audio, I'm going to select create new multicam clip because there's multiple camera angles, multicam, using selected clips. So I will select that and let's give this multicam clip a name. So let's call it multicam video sync, all right? Frame rate, this is going to be the frame rate for which you recorded your video at. My video was recorded at this frame rate. For angle sync, we're going to want to select this and change it to sound. That way DaVinci Resolve will use the sound in the clips in order to synchronize the footage. And the rest is really not that important. So now we'll select create. Amazing, and you'll notice that DaVinci has created a folder called Original Clips. If we double click this, you'll see that we have all of the footage that we used for our multicam clip in here. Here to the left, we have our Original Clips folder. And if you select Master, we will go up one file placement and go back to our master file, which is where we were. Now, notice that we now have a multicam video sync clip, the one that we just created. Now, I made a mistake 
when I was recording my top down shot, but I imagine that this might happen to lots of people, so I will show you how to fix my mistake. My mistake is that it was accidentally shot as a vertical video instead of a horizontal one. So the way to fix that is you want to open up your multicam clip in the timeline. So I'm going to right click on my multicam clip and I'm going to select open in timeline. And what this will do is I will be able to see what is inside this clip and manipulate it however I want. So let's select somewhere random over here and essentially the way that this works is any video that is on top of another video is what you'll be looking at. So if we go here on this button and select it, we will be muting the video track and we're left with the iPhone shot, which as you can see is vertical. On the top right of DaVinci Resolve, we have what's called the inspector. Now the inspector window is very important for manipulating any of your clips if you want to, for example, rotate it, or if you want to zoom in, or if you want to reposition it. You can do all of that from the inspector window. I'm going to open that. And here we have our rotation angle. So I'm going to select 90 degrees and that's good, but it's a little bit zoomed out. So let's select two, two times zoomed in. That seems to be pretty good, but I think it can be less. So 1.7, oops, that was 17, 1.7, not enough, 1.8. There we go. So now my iPhone clip is positioned the right way and I can unmute my video track. There we go. Now I want you to notice something. The audio is completely in the wrong place. So this is why we use a clap because the auto sync audio feature doesn't always work and sometimes it's just better to do it manually. So let's do it manually. If you're opening DaVinci for the first time, you may notice that you don't see much in the way of waveforms or frames in these clips. And the reason for that is our timeline viewer. So on the top left of our timeline viewer, right over here, you can select timeline view options. And here you'll, you can hover over these and see essentially what it is that you want but the top right is audio waveforms, so I'm gonna select that so that we can see the audio waveforms. And then for video view options, I am going to go to thumb, boom. And that way we can see the photo of what clip it is that we are looking at. And we can also look at the audio waveforms. Wonderful. So I can remove, I can select that again to make it go away. I'm gonna scroll down and I want to reposition this clip where that clap is. So I'm gonna solo the audio track by clicking the S button and I'm going to zoom in by pressing Control plus. Control minus is zoom out. So Control plus to zoom in. And I want this clap to match the clap of my video camera, the, or rather the audio that was recorded in my video camera. What I like to do is move this to make sure that it's quite perfect, zoom in all the way, and drag it so that it's as close as possible. That's pretty good. Zoom out, and now our audio is properly synced. Sometimes you just have to do it manually. I'm gonna deselect the solo button. And now this multicam clip is ready to be edited. Now you can see at the bottom here that what we have open on our timeline is the multicam video sync clip, not the video sync timeline. So if we look at our bin, our media bin, where we have our clips, we have our video sync timeline, which is where we're going to be performing the edits and we have the multicam clip, which is where we can manipulate it the way we just have. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click the video sync timeline to open it again. As you can see, it's still naked over here. And I'm going to drag in the multicam 
clip. Amazing. Now, you may notice that this window on the left over here is still being used to look at our media bin clips. So we can change that with this button here at the bottom. If we select this, instead of having source or audio track, because I just had the audio track selected, we can select multicam. And now that will be listening to our timeline instead of to our media bin. The one thing to watch out for when you are editing a multicam clip is this over here. Here you have three choices. You have the video choice, the audio and video choice, and the audio choice. So right now we have audio and video selected, which means that when we start editing, we are going to be swapping audio and video from one angle to another, and it'll sound a little bit like this. Now in this example, <laughs> that was definitely not the final take, but uh, it's good enough for this example. So anyways, we don't want to be swapping the audio back and forth. We just want to be swapping the video back and forth. So I'm going to undo my edits. By the way, you can edit this by just pressing down the angle number, one, two, three, four, five, etc. I'm going to go back to the very beginning. Actually, this is where my second clap is. So I'm going to start around here and I'm going to select video and that way I will only be editing between the video clips. So again, I'm going to select blade, cut right here, select my mouse, delete this first part of the footage and drag this to the beginning. Now I want to make sure that my audio, as you can see over here, it's currently set to angle one. I want my audio to be set to the audio angle, which is currently angle three. So before we get started, I'm going to select audio. So you might notice that if you simply click on it, nothing happens. And the reason is because the edits only happen, and you'll notice if you press the numbers as well, nothing happens either. This only happens when the video is actually playing. In order to swap the angles when the video is not playing, you simply have to select Alt or Option. So I'm going to select audio only first. I'm going to hover over angle three, select Option, and select the angle. As you can see here at the bottom, it says angle three for our audio. Now I'm going to select video, and I'm going to select angle two, Alt, Select, and now we're starting off our edit with angle two as a video and angle three for the audio and we'll keep it at that. From now on, we just have to make sure that we have this selected and we'll only be swapping between the two video clips. Now in this example, I will be showing you how to sync video with video. So as you can see over here, I have the same paper from last time. I hope this helps some more. And that's a multicam edit. So now let's talk about delivering this. I'm going to clean this up, just gonna drag, and I'm going to select B for blade, or you can click here. I'm gonna select down here, select my mouse, and delete this part of the clip. Wonderful. So let's deliver this now. All I have to do is select on the deliver button, little rocket ship. And now here we are given lots of options. So we can do this custom, we can have YouTube settings, Vimeo settings, etc. I recommend going with H.264. H.264 is sort of the video standard codec, meaning that you'll export it directly onto your computer and it will be the most standard video file. So it's most likely to work on most computers, most websites, etc. So what I would say is select H.264. Here, let's change the file name to video sync export. 
And for the most part, the rest of this, I believe you can actually just leave it. The format is QuickTime, Codec H.264, 1920 by 1080. This will pretty much be automatically set to whatever your project settings were when you imported that media. And now we can just select Add to Render Queue. And I will just go ahead and save this to the desktop, Video Sync Export, there we go, save. And our render queue is over here on the right, and we can select Start Render. And we're done. Let's watch the final result. Now in this example, I will be showing you how to sync video with video. So as you can see over here, I have the same paper from last time. I hope this helps some more. Woo! If you found this video helpful, please feel free to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be answering everything that's down there. That's it for me. Have a good one. Peace.